Welcome. Uh, we have with us Josie McDaniel Burkett here to do signing, and we're, we're glad you're here. We'll try to answer all your questions. We'll make some brief presentations. So if you could hold them, hold them till the end, till we go through that. Uh, Chaplain John Denny. Good afternoon. In Hebrews and also in the Old Testament, Noah was warned concerning events yet to come in the storm, in a storm. So in unseen reverent obedience, he constructed an ark. And that ark saved him, his house, and his household. Noah was prepared. If you would, if you're a praying person, please pray with me. Great Creator, we don't know what the storm is going to do, but we do know what's coming. We're warned. Help us to practice sound judgment with those warnings. Let us be obedient to those warnings and be prepared. Those preparations may help to save our household or the household of others. Watch over us as we watch over one another. And I pray this in your mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jeff. Well, we have a, a lot of answers, a lot of information uh, for you. Uh, we do have a quite a storm coming. It's not a hurricane wind, but those, those categories, one, two, three, four, and five, those measure only the wind. They do not reflect the water at all. But we've got a lot of water coming. And we had a lot of water in 2015, as you remember. We had a lot of water in 2017. And the results of overcoming all of that uh, took uh, weeks uh, sometimes, or sometimes even longer. But, but we are prepared. We have uh, everyone is on deck. We've gone through these things uh, many times before. We know we have a lot of new people in the state. So we ask the new people particularly to learn about what you're supposed to do. You can go to the website. We'll go into all that. They have brochures at some of the grocery stores or drug stores that are very helpful. But the, the main thing to remember is to get your information from official sources only. Don't, don't listen to who someone uh, who may not be fully apprised of uh, exactly what the facts are or what the implications are. Uh, we'll be opening shelters, we'll be the school closings, well, those sorts of things will be open to the local government. But I assure you that the team that we have in South Carolina, much of which is reflected by uh, the, the people that you see here, is experienced, dedicated, and, and ready, to, ready to work. And we communicate, collaborate, and cooperate better than anybody in the country, and that's why we've been able to withstand a lot of the things that have come our way, and this is yet another one. We're not sure, we won't know when, until it happens, but it, it may be that this is the most water we've seen uh, for a long time, maybe. We don't know. So stay alert, stay tuned, and stay safe. And now John Quirello, we refer to him as John Q sometimes, because Quire. Corello is hard to say, but, but he's here and he has a lot of information you would enjoy listening to. John. Thank you, Governor. John Quirello with the National Weather Service. So there's the potential for historic rainfall, uh, which is likely to result in areas of catastrophic flash and urban flooding this week in association with Tropical Storm Debbie. Debbie made landfall in the Big Bend area of Florida this morning at 7 a.m. as a Category 1 hurricane, but it's since weakened into a tropical storm. Uh, Debbie will move across northern Florida and southeast Georgia tonight before emerging over the Atlantic tomorrow. Unfortunately, Debbie will linger just off the South Carolina coast for much of the midweek period before possibly moving back on shore somewhere along the northern South Carolina coast or possibly even the southeast North Carolina coast uh, late Thursday, Thursday night into Friday. So given the slow movement of Debbie, uh, off the South Carolina coast, we're confident that there will be a prolonged period of impacts through late week. These include tropical storm force winds and storm surge along the coast, a few tornadoes, and of course, as I mentioned, the threat of catastrophic flash and urban flooding. Rainfall amounts could exceed what some locations have ever experienced in the past, with a widespread area of 10 to 20 inches, with locally higher amounts up to 30 inches possible through Friday across the eastern half of the state, especially east of, I'd say, the I-20 corridor or so. Uh, with the highest amounts in parts of the low country. Potentially life-threatening flash and urban flooding could quickly develop, causing vehicles to become stranded or roadways to become washed out. Water could also quickly enter and rise in homes and businesses, especially in flood-prone locations. 
River flooding is also expected to develop this week and could persist longer term, potentially isolating some communities. Please be aware that the majority of the tropical related fatalities in South Carolina over the past 10 years have been a result of freshwater flooding like we're going uh, to experience later this week. While these rainfall totals could rival amounts seen during the 2015 flood, it should be noted that no two storms are alike and different areas could experience flooding with this event. In fact, it's very likely that some areas that have never flooded in the past will be impacted this time. In addition to the flooding, tropical storm force winds are possible along parts of the South Carolina coast with widespread gusts of 25 to 30 miles an hour expected across the rest of the state. Although these winds aren't particularly strong, given heavy rainfall, it's very likely that trees and power lines could be down, resulting in power outages. Storm surge flooding of two to four feet above ground level is expected midweek along much of the South Carolina coast. This could add to the flooding concerns in coastal communities. Finally, there is a threat for a few tornadoes through midweek, especially today and this evening along the coast. We want to urge residents and visitors to limit travel throughout the week. Be prepared to quickly move to higher ground if flooding develops and never drive through flood waters. More information is also available on weather.gov. Thank you. Thank you, John. Just a few more points. Uh, you notice he said catastrophic flash and urban flooding. And also he said we may have severe flooding in areas never flooded in the past. So the point there is that, that we don't know exactly how much water is coming, but we know it's going to be a lot. And we, in some places the ground is wet, meaning it won't get absorbed. In some areas, uh, there may be drains and may be runoff problems on on a highway. Sometimes it can be water on the on the highway, maybe just a, an inch or two that you can't even see until you're in it. So it's more important than ever to don't speed, stay off the roads if at all possible. Never drive through water. We've had people drive in the water and there was a big hole there, and there they go, or they, they the engine floods out, and we had to take some people off of a roof of a car out on a rural road one time. We were circling around in the helicopter, and as we were circling around, they were getting higher and higher up on the car, and we got them out just in the nick of time with some uh, boats that, that came in. These things are unpredictable, and this, this water is dangerous, and we don't know what we're going to expect this time, and so we'll be keeping you alert as we go. Just a few other things. I mentioned monitor only the official sources. Don't don't listen to opinion from people who may be misinformed. We can expect, as we say, flash flooding, which is highly dangerous. It can it can take a car off a road. We also we have we know we're going to have power outages, but the power companies are ready for that. We're getting the shelters ready. If you are in a low lying area that usually floods, uh, you be, be sure to know what your emergency plan is, what you need to take with you, what you could do with your pets, what you need to do with your medicines, where your children are, where your parents are, all those things. Make those plans now because it might be very hard to do it later. And remember that you and your vehicle, as I've mentioned, can be washed away off of that road. And also, we, John Q mentioned tornadoes. We don't see too many of those, but we're likely to see uh, some of them this time as well. So this this flood this this is an animal that we don't think that we have seen before. So we must be very very prepared, and that means not only those of us that are involved in these services, but also the, the, the everyday citizen out there needs to be alert and be prepared. And now, Kim Stinson, head of emergency management division. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, as the governor said, Kim Stinson, state emergency management division. Uh, Tropical Storm Debbie is certainly on its way here, and we cannot stress enough how serious the flooding uh, threat is here in South Carolina. Uh, this storm may not have uh, the high winds of a hurricane, but it has the potential to cause life-threatening uh, floods across the state. And we'd like to emphasize that Tropical Storm uh, Debbie is not just a coastal event, but it's a statewide event. Uh, South Carolina has many areas vulnerable to flooding uh, from coastal uh, communities to the inland rivers, and we've seen that in the past. Uh, this storm certainly could uh, bring rainfall that overwhelms our drainage systems, uh, leading to flash floods, uh, which can uh, happen with little or no warning. Um, 
The governor mentioned uh, the 2015 flood. Uh, we expect some of the impacts to be similar to what we saw during the 2015 flood, uh, what we experienced in 2015, but uh, except the areas are probably going to be a lot different than they were the last time, but certainly the, the roads and the floods and uh, people's homes damaged. If you live in a flood prone area or uh, in a low lying area, identify a higher ground where you can seek uh, safety if needed, uh, just as the governor said. And then certainly flooding is the one, number one uh, cause of fatalities in tropical storms. And uh, you'll probably hear this again later, but uh, just six inches of fast moving water can knock a person off their feet and two feet can sweep uh, most vehicles uh, away as well. And then also the governor talked about not driving on flooded roads. Uh, turn around, don't drown, it's just not worth the, uh, the, the risk. Uh, also, don't wait until it's too late uh, to act. Uh, if you're advised to evacuate by your local authorities, uh, do so immediately and monitor the, those weather updates and follow the instructions of local officials. Uh, it's also very important for all of us to have an emergency plan uh, in place for whatever disaster situation we might find ourselves in and Tropical Storm Debbie is no different. Uh, we all need to be our own emergency managers and have those plans. Residents should uh, review their plans, uh, the personal safety plans, and consider actions that they would need to take in advance uh, of uh, this storm. Uh, having enough bottled water and non-perishable food to sustain each family member for three days. Having a weather radio and flashlights, extra batteries and chargers. Knowing where your important documents are, such as birth certificates and insurance policies in the event that you have to leave your home. Certainly stay tuned to local media for the latest advisories uh, from the National Weather Service and the National Hurricane Center. And then follow uh, trusted, verified sources for the latest news and be prepared to follow the instructions of state and uh, local public safety officials. Uh, to help with planning, we encourage uh, all residents uh, to visit our website at scemd.org which has a wealth of information on how individuals, uh, families, and businesses uh, can prepare for emergency situations, including this one that we're faced with right now. Also, our South Carolina Emergency Manager app is also a great tool, which includes a component to allow citizens to create their own personal plan. And then uh, from an operational uh, perspective, we are taking several actions at the state under the direction of the governor. Uh, the State Emergency Operations Center, where we're located right now, uh, has been activated and operational uh, 24 hours a day to coordinate the state response to uh, Tropical Storm Debbie. We started conducting uh, county coordination calls uh, Sunday and to identify any issues or unmet needs, and counties are reporting no unmet needs at this time. And our logistics system has been activated uh, to assist local authorities. Uh, and that system has been validated uh, extensively over the last several years for the many disasters that we've had. And we currently have over 100 requests that are being actioned uh, right now, uh, ranging from sandbags to swift water rescue teams. And then as a final note, Team South Carolina has had a great deal of experience with preparing for, responding to, and recovering from hurricanes and tropical storms over the past several years. And this experience remains our greatest strength. Uh, and will ensure our success moving forward. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Also, I want to mention on Sunday, yesterday, I issued the executive order declaring a state of emergency out of an abundance of caution. And what that allows us to do is to begin implementing our state emergency operations plan, which has been developed and refined over, over the years. And all of that is a part of the state's preparation, preparations getting ready, making it easier for us to work together. At this time, I do not anticipate it being necessary to issue any evacuation orders. Not necessary at this time, but we'll, we'll continue to watch that uh, carefully. And I don't believe it is necessary to order the closing of state facilities or, or agencies at this time. We'll keep you aware of that as well. Now for the highways, Justin Powell, Secretary, Department of Transportation. Thank you, Governor. Uh, the South Carolina Department of Transportation is prepared and ready to respond to the heavy rains that we are anticipating from Tropical Storm Debbie. Over the weekend, we had crews uh, working out to clear drainage ditches, uh, inlets, uh, things that we know where we have drainage hotspots to be ready for this storm. 
We have over 2,300 personnel mobilized and ready to respond and have gone to 24-hour operations through the duration of the storm and will be available to begin cleanup after the storm has uh, passed us. Uh, this is an all-hands operation. We have already moved some crews down from the upstate down to the lower part of the state where we expect the most impacts to be. We have been uh, preparing for this storm and we encourage residents to prepare as well. Uh, you can follow travel information can be found on our 511 app. You can get on the Google or Apple stores. Uh, we also have our tw uh, call center is available at one eight five five go sc dot or 855-467-2368. However, with the just uh, rain that is forecasted to come here, uh, the best advice I can do you is, is to give you is to per limit the amount of driving that you're doing out there on the roads. If you do come across uh, flooding uh, flood waters, do not drive through it. As uh, Director Stinson just said a minute ago, uh, just two feet of water can move almost all vehicles, and so we encourage you uh, to limit your travel to uh, focus on what you need to do and uh, to turn around and not drown. But uh, SCDOT is prepared and ready to respond for this event. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Secretary Powell. Director Robert Woods, Department of Public Safety. Thank you, Governor. <clears throat> Rob Woods, Director of the South Carolina Department of Public Safety. The South Carolina Department of Public Safety began preparations on Sunday for De Tropical Storm Debbie. We completed our initial response plans. We placed our highway patrol and state transport police in a, rate, in a ready status, all of those personnel, and we conducted our initial conference call, our coordinating conference call with our field commanders. This morning we began response operations with enhanced law enforcement line patrols in our Midlands area all the way to the coast. <clears throat> and we begin staffing the State Emergency Operations Center as well as our own statewide command post. Uh, the line patrols will continue around the clock throughout this event and will include personnel from the Highway Patrol Division, from the State Transport Police Division of SCDPS, as well as support from the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources, and the South Carolina Department of Pardon, Parole, and Probation. Our operational priorities include providing timely response to increased calls for service due to traffic collisions and uh, disabled motorists, and assisting SEDOT with road closures and traffic diversions resulting from flooding, down trees, and down power lines. Currently, we have 197 personnel deployed for our first operational period during the day shift, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., and again, that's from the Midlands to the coast, and we'll have 167 personnel assigned to the night shift tonight, that's 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Uh, just to reemphasize this point, highway safety is a partnership. It's a partnership between law enforcement and the motoring public. As has already been mentioned, every agency that's represented here has, has gone to great lengths to prepare for this event, and we just ask the public to do the same. And as already has been emphasized, please, the best way to keep us from having to respond to these calls for service is to stay off the highways altogether during this event. But if you have to be on the highways, slow down, adjust your speed for the conditions, be aware that hydroplaning is always a, 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 a real risk during any rain event, but especially during this type of rain event. And as Secretary Powell mentioned, if you see water standing on the road, don't assume you can go through it. Turn around, don't drown. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, sir. Inspector General Sean Fay, Department of Social Services. Uh, thank you, Governor. Uh, Sean Fay, Inspector General for the Department of Social Services. Um, our mass care team has been working with our county partners and community partners uh, to closely uh, set up those shelters that might be needed for the populations that could be affected. As of right now, there are three shelters currently in operation, two in Charleston, one in Jasper County. That gives us a total population uh, capacity of 659 people. There are 27 people currently in shelters. Uh, there are potentially uh, four other shelters opening today. There will be two in Berkeley County and two in Georgechester County. That will give us seven total shelters for the day in a population capacity of 1,796. There are a number of other counties that are potentially on standby should additional sheltering be needed. Uh, we want to let people know if you're going to go to a shelter that they need a plan for that. Uh, they should bring any important documents with them, their identification, um, any other information they might need to bring. They should also look at uh, blankets, sleeping bags, pillows, uh, any comfort items. Particularly with medication, they should plan for a longer, uh, just in case, uh, might need medication for several days longer than they might anticipate. And then any special foods that they might need in case they have any restrictive diets. Thank you, Governor. Thanks, sir. 
Director Myra Reese, Department of Environmental Service. Thank you, Governor. The South Carolina Department of Environmental Services um, is prepared and continues to work closely with the Governor's Office, SEMD, with our fellow state agencies, and with local officials around the state as we prepare for Tropical Storm Debbie. As you've heard, this storm is a slow-moving storm with significant rainfall projections. And the uniqueness of this storm is really what informed our preparedness priorities over the weekend, including dam safety, continu continuity of operations at our state's water and wastewater facilities, and coastline impacts. Beginning with dams, communications with um, dam owners of our regulated 2,400 regulated dams started Sunday afternoon, where we advised owners to be vigilant, keep their eyes on the dam, keeping spillways clear of debris, and keep them flowing. Also assessing the water levels uh, now and consider lowering those water levels while coordinating the release with downstream dam owners. And I will say that we are hearing back from dam owners and neighbors, and they are heeding our advice. And I want to personally say how appreciative we are for the response and the commitment of our dam owners in South Carolina. Dam owners should be checking on their dams throughout the event as conditions can rapidly change. Today, um, our team conducted pre-storm assessments of some dams that we felt like might be vulnerable to this type of intense storm, and we're working with the owners to advise them if any additional steps might be recommended to um, minimize any impacts. We have a 24-hour emergency number to report problems with the dams, 803-898-1939 and uh, we're manning that 24-7. As far as drinking water and wastewater facilities, we're working very closely with our more than 2,500 drinking water providers and approximately 1,500 wastewater providers providing, providing assistance as they prepare and implement their emergency plans. We also are working with our collaborative partners, including South Carolina Rural Water Association, SC Warren, uh, which is the Way Water Wastewater Agency Response Network to offer assistance during and following the storm. The focus is threefold on preparedness to maintain operations, to respond to unanticipated impacts, and provide recovery as quickly as possible to maintain the delivery of clean water and wastewater services to communities across the state. Coastal prop properties, we also are focusing on our 180 miles of coastline and concerns from residential and commercial property owners who have concerns about impacts from storm surge. Today we have issued emergency orders for coastal property owners along the immediate beachfront, allowing actions now. These orders allow minor renourishment, sand scraping, or installation of sandbags to provide temporary protection to beachfront structures. These orders will remain in effect for 30 days. And then I just, in closing, just want to say um, that we are interacting very closely with local emergency response officials to communicate potentials um, for all environmental hazards, and um, we appreciate um, the, the great Team SC effort and the, all the coordination that's occurring. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reed. Director Emily Farr, Labor Licensing and Regulation. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> I can provide um, uh, an update on the preparedness that we have for search and rescue efforts that may be required after this storm. Um, that being the Department of Labor Licensing and Regulations Division of State Fire, which has been working with the state search and rescue teams and local fire departments since last week to ensure we have as many resources as we can to respond to what may be swift water rescues, flooding, structural damage, et cetera, that may occur after the storm. Um, the state has regional search and rescue teams that have swift water rescue capabilities in Columbia, Charleston, Myrtle Beach, and Hilton Head. Those are going to remain in their home areas to respond to the storm there. But we also have a state search and rescue team as well as a regional team from Greenville that are already responding and will be in place later today to support the needs of our local responders. 
Given the flooding predictions and the response currently anticipated by the storm, we've recognized our in-state resources are already committed, so we are reaching out to make sure that we pull in as many other resources as we may need um, from other states and from FEMA. So to that effect, we have already sent requests to other states um, for their search and rescue and swift water boat teams. Um, and we have teams now coming from Tennessee, Alabama, and Michigan to assist us. By early this evening, we will also have five FEMA search and rescue teams with swift water boat capabilities at the State Fire Academy here in Columbia. They are currently just using the location as a pre -state, a place to pre-stage their assets to respond throughout the southeast where they might be needed. But given the weather projections currently in South Carolina, we anticipate requesting that FEMA dedicate some of those resources to South Carolina's response needs. Um, all this is to say that we continue to assess our in-state in resource needs in contact with fire department chiefs and our county emergency managers in the affected areas, as well as requests that are coming to the state's emergency operations center to ensure that we do all we can to prepare and be ready to respond to the storm. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, ma'am. Dan McCarty, Adjutant General. Thank you, Governor. On behalf of the soldiers, airmen, and employees of the Military Department of South Carolina, we are prepared to support Team South Carolina response to uh, Tropical Storm Debbie. Uh, our operations center is currently open and operational. Uh, we have sent out warning orders to all of our units to be prepared to uh, get their soldiers ready and to prepare their equipment for possible mobilization. Uh, we're currently in the process of mobilizing approximately 300 soldiers to provide high water vehicles, which are normally used in floods to help evacuate folks that may be in, in uh, stranded locations. We'll have recovery vehicles that will be able to help uh, recover equipment, vehicles that may be uh, stranded due to being in water areas that they shouldn't have been in. Uh, we will also have uh, aviation assets available to support the SC Heart mission that Director Farr just spoke of, and we'll have some limited engineer support, and our liaison teams will be deployed to the counties to help facilitate our response. Our position is, again, about 300 soldiers, but we have significant capability to grow that force as necessary, both in numbers and equipment, and we're prepared and we'll continue to monitor that. Also, the South Carolina State Guard is available to support the state in this response. Thank you. Okay. Well, does anyone have any questions? Uh, this is a question for, I guess, other folks. Um, you talked about some of the areas that, that there will be similar impacts like 2015, but the areas will be different. Is there any particular neighborhoods, any areas in the state that you all are most concerned about that you feel like residents really need to heed the warnings much more seriously? Well, the uh, and you've probably seen the graphics on it, but down in uh, along Buford up to Charleston, uh, they're expecting in some areas as much as 30 inches of rain. So that's pretty significant. Uh, that's more than we saw in uh, 2015 in any area. I think the, the top number there uh, was about 26 inches, and it was more along the lines of about 20 inches on that. But certainly that area down in there is going to receive a lot of rain and uh, is probably going to need some assistance as we proceed through this operation. Okay. Next. You uh, mentioned that uh, you're, you're talking to folks to already uh, look at their dams to make sure that they're maintained or cleaned out. Um, I know you said that uh, you're already starting to release some water from those dams and spillways. Um, are there any areas that are of significant concern for you, and are there any neighborhoods or other, other areas um, that would be negatively affected by um, releasing some of that water? I think um, one thing that we're seeing is that when any dam is considering you know releasing some of the water there they are coordinating that release downstream so we that's one of the lessons learned you know from previous storms and i think our dam owners are very sensitive about that and make sure um, uh, that they do that before they start releasing water might i ask a follow-up to that yes. mm -hmm. um how many dams have been evaluated in person by department of environmental services so far today uh, we identified, I guess, about 19 dams, and 
basically those were just dams we wanted to get a current status of. Uh, even if we had done an inspection of, of a particular dam three months ago, this is such a unique storm and has unique impacts. And so we looked at a variety of factors and identified about 19 dams that we wanted to get out in the field, engage the condition, and look and see if there were any um, last uh, efforts that could be made to minimize any release of, of dams and impacts to the communities and property and roads. I will say that I have not received the results of that assessment. Just because we are doing assessment doesn't mean there's a problem. Um, but I will be getting hearing results this afternoon, um, you know, as far as those assessments. And was there any particular criteria for those 19 dams? There were several different, um, you know, criteria. Um, the rainfall projections, um, if just the inundation mapping that we do, you know, potential risk to road roads and uh, property damage, um, um, you know, those types of things. Um, but we look at probably um, five or six different um, factors and criteria that we use. Thank you. Mm -hmm. More questions? Governor, have you yeah. spoken with the president yet or anyone of the federal government about this? In the yes, past? I spoke this morning with the FEMA administrator, Ms. Um, Chriswell, and she said if, if we can't get things moving fast enough to give her a call, and I promised I would. And she was most helpful in uh, interested and concerned about what we were facing. And also I got a call from Rear Admiral Doug Schofield, Coast Guard Rear Admiral, who's in Charleston. By the way, that is the biggest facility of the Coast Guard in the United States. And they have a lot of capacity with swift boat, boats and helicopters and things of that nature that we can, can use as well. So as I say, we, we've got a great team and we've got a lot of, a lot of firepower we can bring to this situation. What we can't control is, is people not paying attention and doing things uh, without thinking about it. So we uh, again urge everybody, everyone to, to be careful, be safe, listen to official sources when in doubt, don't, and don't drive on water, don't go fast anywhere, and uh, be sure to take care of your loved ones and your neighbors to the extent you can. Yes. I don't know if this is a question for you or governor or whoever. Um, have any of the lake levels been lowered to this point? Is that something that the state is monitoring to see if that potentially needs to happen? Hi, thank you. Andrew Bateman with the Office of Regulatory Staff. We're in frequent communication with uh, investor and utilities, and I can report that uh, Lake Moultrie, Marion, and Lake Murray, the levels have all been lowered. Any more questions along that line? Uh, Governor, as far as uh, uh, your confidence in the power grid and our local utility companies, um, have you spoken with anyone from Duke or Dominion or the other companies um, about their preparations and plans for the storm? Uh, I have not personally in the last few days, but I know they have been uh, regularly consulted and are very much involved. Governor for uh, General McCarty, uh, we sent some high water vehicles down to Florida. Are we, do we need those back, or do we have plenty of vehicles? What's the status of what we have? Uh, no, in response to a request from the state of Florida, we did uh, send about 70 uh, soldiers and about 30 vehicles under an emergency management uh, assistance compact. Uh, they convoyed yesterday to Camp Blanding, Florida. Uh, we have significant assets here. Once they are complete their mission in Florida, they will be returned to South Carolina. If we do need those assets at that time, we'll redeploy them. But right now, we have significant assets to cover everything that we believe we'll need. More questions? Uh, Secretary Powell, we spoke previously about just how severe and intense uh, Hurricane Florence was in 2018. We always saw the Grand Strand cut off uh, with water going up the roadway. How concerned are you and your teams about this? Do you guys have things staged in those areas, knowing the vulnerabilities over there? Sure. So that's what we've been doing all weekend is we've been not only addressing those low points where we know we have a drainage issue in the past, but we're also moving in pre-positioning equipment. We've been doing that, as I said earlier. We've been moving in folks from the upstate down to low country so we can kind of augment our forces and handle it. So each event's different, and we'll see what kind of pops up from there. But uh, we have been preparing and knowing where we know usually have some challenges and issues to be ready for. But, but one, one uh, detail on that, that uh, Highway 501 was threatened. But because of the fast work of Department of Transportation and the National Guard, it was never cut off. And we had to 
barriers along the side. It came close. Yes, it did. <laughs> it, it, it stayed open. I just wanted you to, if you don't mind repeating, you said that you're going to, you're holding off on evacuation orders, assuming that we're holding off on evacuation orders today. That means we are holding off on evacuation orders, period, for this week. But until and unless things change, until and unless things change, we really don't don't know what we're, we're facing yet. But we'll know more soon. And we'll react depending on what, what we see. But so far, we don't, don't see any need for that, for an evacuation. I know that this would also um, be something that the, the county officials, city officials would need to deal with, but in terms of ensuring that the people who are in those uh, low-lying areas, maybe people who aren't getting their information as widespread as others, um, are there any kind of state um, efforts to ensure those folks are getting connected with the shelters or any other higher elevated buildings in the state? Yes, there, there are a number of efforts. Who would like to speak to yeah, yeah, on that question about the evacuation, and during 2015, there was no state-ordered evacuations. They were all handled at the local level, and it's going to be specific areas, and that's really the only way that we think that that can take place. It's got to be done at the local level, but with possible state support in terms of, you know, law enforcement and sheltering and that sort of thing. Uh, and what was the other part of the question? Just about how you're reaching residents, I guess, who may not be getting the information as vastly as others to ensure that they're getting out of a low-lying area that they're in. Again, we're messaging that up here, and it's being very strongly messaged at the local level. Uh, and, you know, quite frankly, that's where a lot of that information gets out is at the local level uh, in the news media and uh, local emergency management and county government. So it's we're pretty uh, pretty sure that that information is getting out there the other thing that we're going to do tomorrow and I didn't mention before is that we and I don't have the number with me right now uh, it'll be activated tomorrow but it's in the hurricane guide is the public information phone system which is a call center that we run out of here so people can call in and uh, and get answers to questions and so we'll be activating that tomorrow as well uh, for anybody that you know hasn't been connected in the past that'll help connect it and uh, but that information is readily available on our website and then also um, on the hurricane guide. And as far as information getting out, y'all have all been in the big room in there where we do those things. And it's, you can tell there's a lot of people involved and it's very intense. But if you go to the different counties, you, you, go, you might think you're back in the big room here, so if it's not quite as big. So a lot of people, very talented, very skilled, with a lot of equipment that are in high gear getting information out and taking care of the people. Um, another question for Director Reese. Um, in terms of uh, coal ash ponds, I know it's been an issue in the past. Mm -hmm. Are there any steps being taken in order to contain any damage from those flooding? Mm -hmm. We don't have any more coal ash basins okay. in near vicinity of a river or stream. Yeah. But we had one last time that flood, but that's been fixed. That's right. right. That was Director Reese, sorry before you left. Um, could we get that dam emergency number one more time? Sure. Okay, it's 803-898-1939. Say it one more time. Okay, 803-898-1939. And I will say that our website is uh, des.sc.gov, which we have a, a wealth of information and resources there as well on other issues. Anybody want another phone number? If <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. What are some lessons or changes in infrastructure you guys have had since 2015 to make sure that this flooding is not as severe as it was then? Well, we, we have a new office. It's uh, the Office of Resilience. It was in direct response to, to this need. And in fact, I think that office with uh, Director Ben Duncan is now a cabinet agency. Uh, they have fixed removed, um, renovated, I think over 3,000 homes now. I think it's, it's a huge number. But also the, 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 some of the, the city, the local governments are taking steps too to when people have homes that are in these low-lying areas that always get flooded over and over, some of them are, are, are buying uh, those, those properties up and making parks and things like that. 
But that's part of the effort of the, the Office of Resilience is to work with these other agencies and get all that data that we need to, to, to see where the weak spots are, the choke spots. But there's a lot has been mentioned here. Just cleaning out, out gullies and drains and those kind of things can make an enormous difference. Sometimes it's not enough. Something like sometimes there's not enough uh, uh, room on the highway to get out in case of a, an evacuation. That's one reason we adding all those lanes going down I-26 to Charleston and out of Charleston. Governor, you mentioned um, that there's been a decent... We are listening live to state leaders and their emergency plans as we look at the impacts of Tropical Storm Debbie. A lot of water coming from... That, those are some of the first words coming from Governor Henry McMaster. A lot of water coming to this area over the next few hours yeah. and days. The message is simple. Stay alert, stay safe. And